And we're back once again for the next episode of A Conversation with Kelly. This is episode 42, I believe. Jesus Christ. Uh, we are filming this on our one year, Allie. Uh, it's our one year, so it's a, it's a very special day for sure. Um, very, very excited that we've uh, we blasted that long. But I don't want to get off track for too long here. Um, we are going to go ahead and cover this week's latest episode of Survivor 41, episode two. We were supposed to have a guest with us, but unfortunately that guest is kind of going through some personal stuff right now. So we're yeah. just going to respect their business and hopefully yeah. get them on another time. Hopefully, um, hopefully, she, hopefully she's okay. We'll eventually get her, but just yeah. hopefully right now she's all right. Yeah, hoping the best for her. Definitely. I know, I know she's going through some shit, so... Definitely, yeah. uh, you know, thinking thinking about her and hope, hoping she's okay. But uh, regardless, I am here with my lovely co-host, uh, Allie. How are you doing today? I'm good. I just finished work, and I just have one more shift until my Friday. Well, until oh, my good. weekend. And then, yeah. <laughs> That's good. We like we like uh, we like making money. I, I don't know how to do that these days because places keep firing me. Um, but no. anyway. We're gonna get into we're gonna get into this episode. I'll say right now, this is definitely gonna be a shorter video than the last one. Yeah, we're talking about one forty three minute episode, which I gotta say, Ali, kind of refreshing. Like I'm not used to this. I'm not used to watching a reality show and there only being one episode to talk about. I'm used I to know. having like fewer episodes to watch. Yeah, so Survivor is, is only yeah, Survivor is only like a one week show or like one day a week show. Yeah, thank God Especially, because like. Still also the season's gonna be shorter too yeah 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 definitely but i will say um this episode i think definitely gave us a better look at what this season is really going to be and i really enjoyed this episode quite a bit i think that it has a really good strategy i think that every single tribe has at least something interesting going on something to talk about i don't think there's a dud in the cast so far even sydney who i know we don't like like I don't think she's necessarily a dud in terms of casting. Like nobody's really boring me right now. I'm yeah, overall honestly, like, really enjoying it a lot. Been, this season's been really strong so far. Yeah, I think so too. So what we're going to do, I talked to Allie about this and we both agreed because the fact this is a show where they're constantly cutting back and forth between tribes, I think the best way to do this is just to talk about each tribe individually, talk about what's going on with them, and then we can get into the, uh, you know, the bigger things. But we're actually yeah. going to start off with the Yasa tribe. Now, I will say we're going to do this up until the immunity challenge. Once the immunity challenge <laughs> happens, then we'll just talk about everything that happens from there. But let's talk about yeah. what happens leading up to the immunity challenge with the Yasa tribe. Big episode for them. Very big episode for oh, yeah. the Yasa tribe. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. So we see that Tiffany is really struggling with the lack of food or rice that they have. And I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine like how this is. Like literally being on, you know, this island all by yourself and there's nothing to eat. There's nothing mm -hmm. to like, you know, look for. I mean, what would you do in this situation? Like, oh my God, that'd be hard. Cause like, yeah. I mean, so it would be fun to be on Survivor, but it'd be really hard because you struggle with food and um, you could barely eat at times. So I would, I don't know, I'd probably look for, maybe go searching for things and try and make something or just like improv. <laughs> I've thought about it. I'm not built for this like at all. I just like, I need to eat. Like I, I just, I could not survive at all. Like I just. Yeah. Ugh, oh no, same. Very, very rough condition, so I really don't blame yeah. Tiffany. No, also, here, and plus we have, plus we really have to be in shape. We have to like be, yeah. do really good and like big, like challenges. Yeah. So Xander and Leanna get back to camp, and they realize everyone else has just like disappeared. They don't know where they've gone, and they assume that because of that, they're probably idol hunting. So Xander decides to split up and look for an advantage of his own. We actually get a lot with Xander in this episode, and I will say. Xander is still boring, but not as boring <laughs> as I thought he would be. He gives me a little bit more in this episode, and that's something I did overall appreciate. But uh, after searching for a bit, he does find the beware advantage, you know, the one that we saw Jeff hide in the first episode. Yep. He does find it here, and he's told that if he takes it, he must do what it says. Otherwise, he needs to just leave the advantage there. So he's unsure what to really do. But he does ultimately decide to take it since he's already taken pretty big risks. Do you think he made the right decision here? Um, I mean, 
I did think he did. It's just like hopefully it doesn't go like hopefully it doesn't come back and bite him later on. But I mean, I think what he I think like he did he made a good p- decision. Just he just has to be really careful. See, I actually think he should have left it. Uh, and the reason I think he should have is just because like he yeah. was literally just at that True. thing like in the last episode and they don't like where you know they could potentially have an extra vote and like knowing he yeah. already has that power he doesn't need all these other powers so like i i honestly that's think cool. he should have just left it because yeah, he wasn't true. i mean like Xander's not in a position right now where he like absolutely needed this you know like he definitely no. had people on his side so, i mean like, unless, he just, I unless he just unless he just wants it for down the road yeah, no, that's true. He he definitely that 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 is a good point. But he does open it up, and what we get here is one of the most cracked immunities I think I've ever heard of. Where basically it is a three way shared immunity. Where the way this works is each tribe has one phrase, but in order for the idol for it to have power, the other two idols need to also be found. So at the next immunity challenge, he needs to say a secret phrase in front of the players that they will also do the same. And once they've all uttered, once they've all been uttered, the idol is activated. But until then, it's no good. And he can't vote at any tribal until then, which is like, what the that's fuck? Insane. Like that, that's, that is insane. Yeah. Um, that changes wow. the game in a big way. I know there's been a lot of crazy. controversy, I feel like, with this twist. Like a lot of people don't seem to yeah. really like it that much. Uh, what, mm-hmm. what do you think of this? Because it's a pretty uh, big disadvantage, I'd say, more than an advantage, honestly. I think. I mean, I don't hate it. It's just definitely crazy. Yeah. Um, like it'll change the game for sure. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I don't know. I like it. I think it's really funny, especially yeah. when he is talking to the other tribe and he's trying to say the phrase and they're just looking at him like he has like four eyes or something like he is just they are just so confused as to like what he's doing here. They're like, why are you <laughs> telling us this? Like, why does this matter? So let, let, we'll get into it more. So the phrase that he has to say, he does tell the rest to try about it. The phrase is not something that you would normally say. And it's uh. <laughs> I truly believe butterflies are just dead relatives saying hi. It sounds like something you say <laughs> when you are high. Like, you know, you're smoking something. You're like, I truly believe that dead butterflies are relatives saying hi. Like, that's that's the vibe I get uh, from that phrase. So the other two are, uh, I'm as confused as a goat on an astroturf, which, like, what? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Know. And then... The other one is a little bit easier, I think, to, like, um, I I think is a little easier to, like, bring into the conversation, which is, um, I didn't realize this till now, broccoli is just a bunch of small trees. So all three of those (laughs) phrases need to be said. I don't know how they're going to be said in a naturalistic manner, because they're all ridiculous (laughs) phrases that you're, I just don't think can, like, um organically be brought up so i don't really know how that's going to play out moving forward but i'm very excited to watch it because i think that that's going to be a lot of fun for sure oh yeah so yeah that's that's the big thing going on but the other part of this that i think is really good is i have to say there is one star of this entire episode i think you know who i'm getting at it's evie evie absolutely oh, yeah stole the show from me this entire episode if, if last episode was yeah if last episode was getting us to believe that shan can win this game this episode convinced me that evie can win this game because yeah. she is probably in the best position out of everyone in her tribe right now. Because we see oh, yeah. this scene with Vogue. Like, everyone's, she's really like everyone's, good. Good. everyone's good with her. Oh, yeah. So we see this scene with Vogue, and he's really terrified. Because there's only going to be four people voting. And that could, and especially since Xander can't vote, they now have a two-to-two two tie. This is one of the reasons I don't think Xander should have taken the advantage. Because now it's put his ally at, a, at, a, at risk. So... Yeah. basically mm-hmm. they, they bring up how if they lose this challenge they're actually planning to go for tiffany just because she's shown she isn't that great at comms i'm actually really liking tiffany so far she's really surprising me, me. i didn't like her in all three season but i i really like yeah, she's her actually, she's definitely one of the more surprising competitors yeah, she's very strategic, and which I I really do yeah. like. But uh, Evie oh, yeah. brings up how she actually is in two alliances right now. She's got an alliance with Xander and Voch, 
mainly because like she knows how dangerous like Xander's advantage is. And so she really wants to like use that to, you know, the best of her ability. But her real alliance is with the women. Uh, she wants to work yeah. closest with yeah. Tiffany and uh, Liana. So basically, she wants her work in the game to not be undermined by the men. So she's going to be working exclusively with them since she just feels better with them anyway. And I'm all here for this. I love these three. I think they're yeah. working very well together. Nobody seems to recognize that she's with them. I think that I can see Tiffany being called out. I can see Liana being called out. I don't see Evie being called out here. I think that she's in a good spot and I think she's going to be able to get herself out of sticky situations or at least the way we're seeing her so far. I think she's a very savvy player and I, mm -hmm. I think she has a lot of potential in this game. Definitely one of my favorites yeah, so I far. Can definitely, like now I can definitely see her winning. Um, I think her and Liana and Shan are my like final three. Yeah, so that's everything in the Yasa tribe. Like I said, definitely. Oh, and then probably, the most I also love, but I also love JD too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, speaking of JD, let's talk about the Ua tribe. That's the next tribe that had quite a bit going on. Nothing too relevant in this episode based on what happens, but we do get some some pretty interesting stuff from them. All right. Brad talks about how he isn't sure how to feel about JD. He felt they vibe well at first, but at the tribal, he was not consistent or predictable and feels he is a loose cannon, and with his name going out, he feels very nervous moving forward. He also doesn't like seeing Ricard and JD heading out to get water, so he decides to beat them there, spy on what they're doing. And this JD is ironic, because I felt like... Oh, I'm sorry. This is ironic okay. because I felt like while watching this, Brad is the loose cannon here. Like, the way that Brad yep. is playing this game, I, I, I feel like he's playing a mini. Like, I don't feel like he's playing, like, Survivor. I feel like he's playing a mini, just trying to, like, you know, maybe get like, names maybe he's, as he's possible. It's like he's playing a Survivor mini. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly what I feel like he's doing right now. Like it's he is just he's on a whole other game like season. I don't know what he's doing, but like I'm kind of here for the cracked energy, but I don't think he's making it super far. Like the way he's playing yeah, right now, he is just yeah. he is not hiding his tracks <laughs> in any way. He's making every single move known. He's doing everything in such like a public manner. And that could potentially save him because people are just not going to think he's a threat. But if he continues to go about things the way he is here, uh, I'm kind of scared for him. I'm, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of scared for him moving forward. Me too. Like, I don't hate him or anything. I just think he's no. definitely going to be an early boot. He's, I'm actually really liking him. Like, I think he's a really fun Me character too. so far. Oh, no, same. <laughs> JD does bring up to Ricard how he doesn't know how to feel about Brad and is pretty convinced he does have the idol. He felt really bad about his position, but feels better now. He also was never rolling the die, and Brad doesn't like how relaxed he is looking. And again, like, I just feel like Brad is picking on, like, the smallest of mannerisms. Like, JD looks a little bit relaxed. He's like, that's not good. I got to target him for that. Like, just chill. Literally, just chill. You're the one that needs to relax. Like, it's it's really not a big mm -hmm. deal. And it ends up not even being that big of a factor anyway because of what happens at Tribal. So all of this is just really funny to me in retrospect. <laughs> Same. Shan feels Brad is very unpredictable and could tell what he was doing and is unsure whether or not to trust him. Shan then talks to Ricard about this and he feels Brad needs to be targeted now, especially since he just told his closest ally he's coming for him. Yeah, literally. I mean, this he like, could not what? have played this worse. He really couldn't have. Like he he's literally oh, no. spying on Baby and Ricard, making it so obvious that he's doing so. He's like, Oh, they're not gonna know that I'm spying on them. Like, yeah, they are. Like, why else would you be like hiding in the bush? Like, what else would you be doing there? And literally. then he goes over to Shan, who is right, who is right now the person that JD does trust the most, and just like spills <laughs> to her that, like, yeah, I want to target JD. Like, oh my god, this guy is just such a mess. And like I said, I'm kind of here for it, but I, I do not think he's making it far at all. Yeah, I don't think so either. 
Yeah, so we'll have to see how things really do play out in terms of that. But I, I thought that was all really interesting stuff. I think they did a good job of really showing, like, uh, just like I said, the cracked energy that Brad is bringing. We don't see a lot of players like this, I feel like, where they're just so upfront about every single thing that they're doing. Um, but Brad is doing that. And like I said, as much as I don't think he's going for, I kind of want him to because I just want to see like what else he's going to do. Like, how is he going to play the whole game like this? Because if he does, like, that's going to be really fun to watch. So, yeah, uh, very interesting stuff going on in the Ua tribe. Uh, the Luvu tribe, there's not a ton going on here. Uh, we get a little bit with them. I think we're going to go back and yeah. forth with these notes, but basically we see Deshaun is struggling to make a fire. Nasir does offer to help out, and which he knows how to do. And he grew up in this tiny village in yeah. Sri Lanka with no water or electricity. And as long as they had rice and coconut and veggies from the field, they had everything that they need. And you can read the rest of that. All right. Sydney feels that Nasir is essential to the tribe, and while they were at first going to boot him, as they get to know him, they realize how much of an asset he truly is. I mean, this really was just showing that Nasir isn't going to be, like, the villain that we thought he was yeah. in that last episode. Oh, yeah. Like, I... I thought that he was coming off a little too strong with the people that he was targeting, um, especially with both Deshaun and Danny. It seemed like he was just being a little bit too forward with that. Um, but I think here he really redeemed himself, like just, you know, helping mm -hmm. them out, you know, showing things that you can just naturally do, but not trying to show off just something that you're able to do. I think he proved he's a very like worthy asset to the tribe. And I actually do see him getting considerably far. I don't think they would have shown this if, he doesn't get farther into the game. So I, I don't see Nasir going as early as we predicted last week. I don't either. I can see him at least making merge. Yeah, I, I think he's going to do pretty well. And um, like I said, I mean, his story, um, I know I said this preseason, but like his story is probably one of the most fascinating to me out of everyone. You know, the fact that he mm -hmm. grew up in like this little town, they basically had to fend for himself, but also kind of learned English through watching Survivor. I mean, it's just one of the most unique stories that I've heard in like any reality show. So I hope just for that alone, like he's able to make far because I want to know more. I want to know more about his time in Sri Lanka. I want to know more about what he had to do, like the sacrifice he had to make. He has a really interesting story and I, I want to know more about him. So yeah, I I really am enjoying uh, Nasir a lot, and I, I thought this was a good segment. But that's everything going on in terms of the individual tribes. Now we're going to finally get into the immunity challenge here. <laughs> All right. Jeff asks, Jeff asks Yasa how they're feeling, and Xander Jeff tries asks. to implement the Huh? No, I said Jeff asks. You said Jeff asks. <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't. I don't think so. You almost said Jeff it. Was funny. Yasa how they're feeling, and, Yon, and, and Xander tries to implement their phrase into what he is saying with how delusional their tribe is. Everyone else is completely silent. Jeff then announces the immunity challenge. And this this was this such a good moment. Like <laughs> It was. In this challenge, one person is going to swim out, dive down, yeah, and retract just the like key. I said, this is then two other tribe members will race through a series of obstacles, and then the other two will race through a series of obstacles. In the end, two remaining tribe members will use that key to unlock the remaining puzzle pieces they are trying to solve. And this time around, two tribes will win immunity, and wait, and this time around, two tribes will win immunity. Sorry, you, I think you messed up here with the notes. Oh, shit. There, let me fix that. Okay. I went I fixed it for you. <laughs> okay, we're good. Yeah. Um, what did you think of this uh this challenge overall? Um, it was definitely a crazy one. <laughs> yeah, I mean there was a lot going on with this, it's very, with this um, obstacle course and then it's very intense. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, 
it was very fun to watch play out. I do want to highlight one moment here, though, when Jeff is talking to uh, Yasa, and he's like, Yasa has been uh, struggling with immunity challenges all season. And I'm like, Jeff, it's literally episode two. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, so I thought that was really funny. When he's yelling that at Tiffany funny. as well, that was definitely a good moment for me. <laughs> he's literally, like, in her face and, like, screaming at her. So, yeah, yeah, it was it was very fun to watch. I enjoyed the challenge. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's still you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. The first to finish the results of the challenge. <laughs> the first to finish will also win a bunch of fishing gear. Oh, you don't, you also... that. No, I didn't. I didn't read that part. Losing tribe will also lose their flint oh. in addition to tribal. Xander gets there pretty quickly, okay. and for Yasa, but struggles to get the key. Sydney gets her key for Luvu, and Jeannie gets it for Ua. Erica and Deshaun get the puzzle done pretty quickly for Luvu, while Ricard and JD for Ua get started on it. Unfortunately for Yasa, Tiffany really struggles to get across the balance beam, but Liana holds her own. Boach and Evie get working on the puzzle for Yasa, and Luvu is the first to win immunity. It's then neck and neck between Yasa and Ua. Ricard gets the puzzle done quickly, which earns Ua immunity. And Ricard got through that so quickly. Like, I was surprised with how he was, like, so quick about it. But, like, yeah, Ua's, like, really killing it, I feel like. Uh, I think, you know, we, we definitely saw last week that, like, they seemed to be really good at challenges. They just didn't have, like, they, they weren't number one. Uh, Luvu's definitely a big threat right now because they are kind of beasting through every single challenge, I feel like. They haven't had any struggles whatsoever. So... Their tribe is probably going to be very kumbaya for a while. Um, and then Ua, like, again, I, I like that we actually got to see them, like, win a challenge this time around. Yasa made sense because, you know, we spent so much time on what was going on with them here. So I wasn't surprised that uh, that Yasa uh, lost this challenge overall. Mm -hmm. But we're not done yet. There's a little bit more going on here <laughs> that you're going to, that Ali's going to talk about. I mean, that one could have been, like, either way, like... Anyone could have won. Yeah, exactly. Jeff then tells Luvu that as the winners, they have another decision to make. Two people will be leaving the camp and taking a journey together to make a private decision. They need to choose one person from the losing tribe, who is Evie and the second person that can either be from Ua or their own tribe, and Deshaun volunteers to go. Yeah, this was uh, very this? interesting, this whole tw the mountain twist that they're doing. Uh, I didn't think this was going to be mm -hmm. like a weekly thing, but it seems like it's going to be. So I think it's really interesting the way that's playing out. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know. Do you like the fact that it's a weekly thing? I, I didn't get that perception. I thought it was just going to be like the first episode. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought it was just going to be the first episode as well. But um, I think it's pretty cool. It's like a cool little twist and kind of add on <laughs> yeah i mean you're basically given a chance to cross tribe communicate for like a couple hours which is like something you don't normally get to do of, obviously it's, so like, kind of, it's kind of just to get a little bit of info yeah pretty much so we do see this segment with evie here where she talks about how when she found out she was going to be leaving her tribe to go on this journey her first thought was panic and being gone for hours before the tribal council is really scary so Deshaun apologizes for bringing her there, but she's happy to be there. And Evie feels this is really good for her. Uh, and again, I think this really shows the good position that Evie's in here, where not only, you know, yeah. is Yasu going to be entering the swap down in numbers, but she feels that if now that she has Deshaun, if she can get really close to them, he'll be in her back pocket. So now she has an ally yeah. from the other side mm -hmm. that she'll hopefully be on the same tribe with. So yeah, I mean, I think she yeah. definitely did this uh, right. And she does, I was surprised by how, like, 
forward she was with him about everything, but she brings up how Yas is kind of in trouble and that she feels that they can help each other out. She brings up how there's really no way that she can risk her vote tonight. And if she keeps his and he risks, uh, he's actually going to get an extra vote with no risk, which he really appreciates. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thought they bonded very well here. I think they could be a really unexpected duo. Nobody's really, I think, going to clock them or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, and then Deshaun uh, talks a little bit about how he's trekking up the mountain and he talks about these three D's that his dad da taught him, which is discipline, determination, and dedication, which is going to get him to win every single time, kind of showcasing like his strategy. But then we also learn that he's actually a doctor, which is far fetched, especially for black yeah. men who are apparently the smallest demographic and he talks about how he lives the experience of a lifetime and feels his parents will be proud. Again, I think the show is doing a good job of like, you know, um, slowly inching us in to like, see who these, who these people are aside from just, oh, yeah. him, which I, which I really do appreciate. So I, I think it was very, like, job it that. was really, it was like a wholesome moment. And I really like that. They, yeah. Like you said, yeah. I like they're um, getting us or tell, like getting us to know everyone. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So Deshaun then asks Evie who's going to go home and she brings up how Xander is like the nicest kid in the world and they need him to go. To, they need him for challenges, but he does have this extra vote now and she feels that it's going to go that way. She doesn't give any hint of the girls alliance, which I thought was very smart. I'm glad she didn't tell him yes. everything that was going on. She really wants to keep that hidden. But she does bring up to him how the idols work this season and she plans to reveal and she brings up something that I think is honestly kind of a valuable strategy. And she talks about how um, I'm not going to reveal if I can't reveal my information, I'm going to reveal other people's information, which I think is definitely like the right way to go about it, because oh, yeah. there's not going to be any consequence if she tells someone, especially someone that's on another tribe about this. Exactly. So it, it might not even matter, but I think by her doing that, like you know, or really showed how legit she is to work with Deshaun. Oh, yeah. So they do stumble upon that wheel. Evie hopes they can be in the alliance and use that extra vote together. And yeah, I mean, it seems like they're going to work very well together moving forward. And I'm, I'm very much here for it. So I really enjoyed these two a lot. Yeah. I, I think that, like I said, they could be a, a really good, like, uh, you know, um, unexpected duo. Oh yeah, I agree. So, <laughs> Yeah, uh, but the rest of the episode pretty much is getting to actually see the Yasa tribe and what they uh, ultimately end up deciding in terms of this tribal, which, uh, Ali, we're going to get into the messiness of it all. All right. Tiffany feels bad that they lost the tribe because it was very much on her, but doesn't feel it will affect her game in that, that much since she does feel really good with both Evie and Liana, and they want to vote on Xander. So it really had to go badly for her to go home tonight. Right. So Motion she definitely is like in a better position than I think the guys are expecting, especially because she has like yeah. Liana and Eddie on her side. So it was really just like between yes. Xander and, and Boche here. Pretty much. <clears throat> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Voce and Xander, meanwhile, are pretty much set on taking out Tiffany. And he asks Voce if he has his vote. And he said nobody else said the phrase so sadly he doesn't get a vote this round. Voch feels they are on life support right now and need to come up with a plan to get them through the next tribal. He knows they also need Liana on their side since Xander lost his vote. <coughs> he talks to Liana about how they can't keep losing since they will just get obliterated at some point. She thinks it's they can talk she thinks they can talk to Evie. 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 <laughs> Evie? Who's Evie? <laughs> Evie? Grace's cat? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Shout out to Grace. Grace's cat. <laughs> yes. She thinks they can talk to Evie. They can make something happen. And he brings up Tiffany and she says she's down to make it happen. But secretly she's planning to blindside Dander. However, Tiffany seems like she's wavering and Liana brings up how dangerous he is to get the idol. Liana hopes Evie can come back. I can't hmm? see any of this. <laughs> Why? Wait, why can't you see I? it? 
Liana hopes Evie can come back. So, oh. however, Tiffany seems like she's wavering, and Liana brings up how dangerous he is to get the idol. Liana hopes Evie can come back soon since they will work well together, and she's really worried that with how paranoid Tiffany is, she will do something that ruins this for them. And I was really worried she was going to. I was like, oh no, Tiffany, don't fuck up this plan. There's just a lot of notes, so it's like very confusing. <clears throat> I mean, I can read the rest if it's too much. Um, no, 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 it's okay. No, I got it. No, 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 I got it. <laughs> okay. You've already said a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love your voice, though. <laughs> I like yours. When Evie comes back, she explains to them that it was the exact same thing this time around, and she figured Nishan would risk his, risk his so she protected hers. Tiffany explains to Evie and Liana what's going on, and they assure him he has no power since the idol didn't get activated, and they feel if there's going to be a swap soon, they need to get the idol an extra vote out and have three women in charge of this game. Meanwhile, she strategizes with both Ray and Xander that they want to get Tiffany out. Yes, I love... We stand Which again, the just with. really playing the middle here. Really playing the middle. <laughs> we love the women working together. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, she strategizes with Boch and Xander that they want to get Tiffany out. Tiffany brings up how Xander could have the idol, and if her name is brought up, he'd have he'd have it, so they should probably get Boche out, which would protect her, and Tiffany says it isn't about whether or not she has the idol. The way, the way to protect themselves is to vote Boche out, and she feels he may in fact be lying to Evie. Which makes sense, because, I mean, Xander yeah. isn't a threat if he doesn't have a vote, whereas Voce does have a vote and can make things steer in their direction. He was trying to get Liana on their side. So this was honestly a really good move for Tiffany. Like, I was very surprised oh, yeah. with um, how she was able to, you know, maneuver the vote from Xander and put it onto uh, Voce. I didn't know if she was going to be able to do it, but she did it in a way where she it was very smooth. Oh, yeah. It was a great move. Yeah. She explains to her the plan, and, and Evie feels it's not necessary since he doesn't have a vote until his idol works, and she explains that if he does, she will go home. Evie knows that he can't do anything, but Tiffany seems dead set on vote, Jay. <coughs> right, so we do get to the tribal. <laughs> okay? Tribal. Yeah, I hope I'm not losing my voice. Oh, I can, I can read the tribal. No, it's okay. You already put my name for it. <laughs> At the tribal, Jeff asks know. Tiffany how it feels to be vulnerable, and she says she likes giving it 100%, but learned that she can't be happy and social and play this game on zero food and no sleep, and she just wanted to lay down and hope no one sees her. He says the lesson is survivor, and it will hum humble her. And then asks her if she's worried and people will be targeting her. And she says, while well, the physical aspect, she lacks. <coughs> she hopes she makes up for it socially and the bonds she created. She hopes it's enough to keep her around and they will not just be blaming her. And I will say, you coughing actually segues into something I want to talk about. Jeff almost had no voice well, when he was talking at this tribal. I, I didn't know what was going on. I guess true. it was he was yelling at Tiffany too much. So at the my tribal, he's like, oh, honestly, my throat, my throat, my tribal council. <laughs> honestly, my throat's probably just dry. I mean, I hope. <laughs> I hope it's not. Yeah. I hope I'm not getting sick. Yeah. So I, I, I guess whatever happened to Jeff is happening to you. <laughs> Evie then brings up how well they like this group of people and they could swap tomorrow. But if not, they could be down to three people. So they have to have a balance. I've been there the before, but it's not fun. It's not fun when you have a three-person oh. tribe. Oh no, not that. The votes are red, and as expected, it's a pretty split decision, but ultimately the girls' alliance prevails, and Boche is the next person voted out of Survivor by a vote of three to two. Yeah, I... Uh... I'll be honest. I didn't get much out of Voce. Like I, I enjoyed his segments in the first episode when he talked about being a doctor with COVID and things like that. Um, but aside from that, like he just didn't really do much for me. He was kind of 
Like I said, there weren't too many boring players. He was kind of a bore. Like he just didn't really do much for yeah. me overall. Um, I just didn't really feel like um, he I was mean, sticking out that much. So I don't really feel like I mean, this I was that much of a loss. I didn't hate him. I didn't dislike him. He just wasn't. He was just kind of there for me. Yeah, I yeah. He just he wasn't terrible or anything. Just not someone that I was particularly like thrilled with in the game. So yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not too surprised one that the vote went on to him because I feel like Xander is honestly doing a better job of making connections than Voce. Uh, two, he did not do a good job, I think, of hiding how close Tim and Xander really were. Like it was very obvious that those two were working together. I think Voce needed to make another like side alliance without Xander, and he didn't do that. And I think that could have potentially saved him. But I think what ultimately cost him in the game was not trying to venture out and like make other bonds. So I think that did hurt him overall, but he, we do get a little insight for him before he, he does uh, leave. So what, what does he say? Ali? Um, Boche talks about how he came into this game with a mistrust of people and didn't make sure his relationship building was going well with the rest of the tribe, but, and so pretty much basically, what I said. Yeah. Basically, and basically he says that they got him and, um, yeah. But that his experience was good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically what I said. I think he just needed to really just focus more on his like social relationships, and I think he would have been in a much better spot. But alas, that did not happen. And yeah, that is yeah. the next person we end up losing. Um, overall, though, yeah. like I said, <laughs> I think this was a really strong episode. There's a lot of interesting conflicts yeah. going on, especially in Ua. Uh, I really wanted to see Ua go to tribal again just because of like how epic <laughs> that first tribal was. This that wasn't was as crazy. messy as that. Yeah, this wasn't as messy as that, but I, like I said, I do like the divide going on with uh, oh, yeah. Yasa. Now, the one thing Same. I do think we should talk about, a lot of people are speculating that we're going to get a swap in the next episode. Do you think it's coming? I can see it either being this next episode or the one after. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. I feel like it's still very early for a swap. I, I know the yeah. game is, like, quicker. Um, but, like, <laughs> after two rounds, like, really? We're going to have a swap yeah, already? I feel, like it, so. I feel like it would be in, like, the fourth episode. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they could potentially do a swap, like, at the end of the episode or something. I'm not sure. Um, but I know a lot yeah, of see. people are speculating it because they didn't really show a ton <laughs> in terms of, like, the, like, next on Survivor. They didn't really show a ton on there. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not really sure. I am going to make a prediction that Uwa is going to tribal, though, because they showed a lot of Uwa in that uh, promo. <laughs> so I do think they're probably going to go to tribal soon, which will be epic because... I, I just want to see, you know, what's going on there. Is Brad going to be victorious or is he going to, or or is JD going to come back on top? I don't know. We'll have to see what happens there. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed this episode a lot. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, really enjoying uh, this season overall. And uh, yeah, is there anything else we want to say here, Ali, before we close things out? Um, I mean, really just excited for the next episode. So far, it's a really strong season, and it's going really well. And hopefully the rest of the season is great, too. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, before we do close things out, we do have a few things to plug. We have quite a few podcasts coming your way. The finales of The Circle, Big Brother 23. Those are both coming yep. at some point. I'm not sure when, but they are coming soon. So look forward to yeah. that. Uh, we're going to have our Ascendance Live episode. Um on uh tomorrow i believe yeah so definitely look forward to that one as well um what else is there what am i forgetting uh i think that's it for now oh of course uh we do have to plug this as well uh please apply for spotlight survivor uh it's an org yes. that I, Ali and i and a few of our other friends have put together uh it's really good there's a lot of stuff we have in store uh it is a survivor game of course but there's a little bit more of a twist going on we're not going to get into what that's all about but we do have some really cool things planned for that game and i don't know if we're going to be talking about it on here or anything maybe we will like you know, maybe we will after the season. We should do like a like an after the season podcast. That could be kind of cool. Yeah, we should. Uh, just talk about our that would be really cool. You know, hosting. Yeah, just like talking about our experience hosting and things like that because we've yeah. never really done that before. Yeah, we can talk about. Um, like, yeah. We can talk about our first season of hosting. 
yeah, that could be cool. So, you know, maybe you'll get some updates there, but please apply. Seriously, we we would love to see uh, some of you in there. But uh, yeah, other than that, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Uh, as always, comment and down also, below. Uh, let us know. And also stay tuned for a meeting with Mally, where we talk about Dancing with the Stars and the Mass yes. Singer. Yes, that as well. Definitely. <laughs> that That's another show that you should uh, be looking forward to um but other than that guys that's it for our review of uh this week's episode of survivor as always comment down below let us know what you guys thought of this week's episode uh that's it for this video we will see you guys in our next video and we will see you guys for that okay bye